millions of people seem confused as to whether they are normal or not. The only way to determine if you are normal is to see yourself relative to others. Normality is not subjective. In other words, you cannot determine whether you are normal by consulting your own thoughts and feelings. You can only determine normality by comparing yourself to a group of people. That group may be composed of the global human population. Or, it may be comprised of a smaller group, clustered along familial, community, religious, ethnic, national, cultural, or regional lines. When comparing yourself to a group or various groups, you are looking for similarities and differences in behavior in given situations. Why behavior? No one knows what another person is thinking or feeling. At best, you may deduce what a person is thinking or feeling based on the person's actions and or reactions to a specific stimuli. The process of identifying the norm is statistical. The investigator, i.e., you, a statistician, analyst, or other professional, sets up a survey or experiment records the observations, and plots the observations on a chart. When the data is plotted, either directly or via continuous sampling, a normal curve appears. The middle of the curve represents approximately 68% of the people having the similar responses. These people constitute the norm. The further your behaviors differ from this majority group, the less normal or the more abnormal you become. Once you establish where your actions compare to the norm, you have to decide whether to accept or change your circumstances. Whether you fix or accept your normality or abnormality depends on two things. 1. Do you like your standing compared to the norm? 2. Does your status harm other people? Here are some scenarios to consider. 1. If you believe that your IQ is higher than average, but you find out that your IQ is abnormally low. Does having a low IQ prevent you from living the life you want to live? 2. If you think your income is low, but you find out it is higher than normal for the people in your area. Is this a good thing even when you are having trouble paying your bills? 3. You are overweight, yet you are the same weight as the majority of people in your town. Are you still likely to suffer from lifestyle diseases? 4. Lastly, you are frequently arrested for assault charges. Should you consider moving to a country or state where there is more violence? Or, should you take anger management courses? What do you think?